So this video is practice questions for the AP physics exam for the topic of electric potential and capacitance. It can also be used as practice for the IB or GCSE exams because they have similar basic IDs questions. So for question 1, which of the following statements is are true? 1. If the electric field at a certain point is 0, then the electric potential at the same point is also 0. And second, if the electric potential at a certain point is 0, then the electric field at the same point is also 0. And the third, the electric potential is inversely proportional to the strength of the electric field. And the answer is E. None are true. And the reason is for the first statement, even if the electric field at a certain point is zero, this does not mean that the electric potential is necessarily zero at that point. And we can understand this from the example of two positive equal charges. At the midpoint between the charges, the electric field is zero, but the electric potential is not zero. For the second choice, even if the electric potential is zero, it does not mean that the electric field at a certain point is zero. And we can understand this from an electric dipole, wherein the middle the electric potential is zero but the electric field at that point is not zero. The third statement is also not correct because the electric potential is not inversely proportional to the strength of the electric field. We can understand this by considering a single positive point charge plus Q. At a distance r from this source charge, the electric field strength is given by Coulomb's constant times Q over r squared. And the electric potential is given by KEQ over R, which is equal to R times E. So as you can see, V is proportional to E and not inversely proportional to E. So the answer is E. So for the second question, if the electric field does negative work on a negative charge as the charge undergoes a displacement from position A to position B within an electric field, then the electric potential energy and the answer is C which means the electric potential increases. So by definition we know that the work done is equal minus the change in the potential energy. And because the work is negative this means that the potential energy is positive and so it will increase. So for question 3, the work required to assemble the system shown above, bringing each charge in from an infinite distance is equal to. So the work done to assemble the configuration is equal to the potential energy of the system. So W is equal to U, which is equal 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught sigma qi qj over rij and the potential energy is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught and we include each pair so we include 1 with 2 with 3 and with 4 and 2 with 3 and with 4 and then 3 with 4 and you can see the distances are equal to s and the charges are also equal and this distance using pythagoras theorem you can find it to be equal square root of 2s and if you substitute you get this expression and it is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q square over s times 4 plus square root of 2 so the answer is b so for question 4, negative charges are accelerated by electric fields toward points at higher electric potential. And this is because by definition, the change in potential is equal to minus the work done over Q. If an electric field accelerates a negative charge doing positive work on it, then the work done is positive. And if Q is negative, then this ratio is positive, which means that delta V will increase and the negative charge will accelerate toward points at higher electric potential. So for question five, a charge Q experiences a displacement within an electric field from position A to B. The change in the electric potential energy is delta UE and the work done by the electric field during this displacement is WE. And the answer is E because by definition, the potential difference is defined to be the change in potential energy over Q. And for a displacement from A to B, V final is VB and V initial is VA. And this is equal to delta U over Q. And so the answer is E. So for question 6, which points in this uniform electric field between the plates of the capacitor shown above 
lie on the same equal potential. So because the electric field is uniform between the plates of the capacitor, the potential varies linearly with distance from either plate, and the potential difference is given by ED, where D is the distance between the capacitor plates. So the points 2 and 4 are at the same distance from the plates, and they lie on the same equal potential. So the equal potentials in this case are planes parallel to the capacitor plates. So option A is not correct because 1 and 2 are not at the same equal potential, neither are 1 and 3, but 2 and 4 are at the same equal potential, 3 and 4 are not at the same potential, and also E is not correct. So for question 7, two isolated and widely separated conducting spheres each carry a charge of minus Q. Sphere 1 has a radius of A and sphere 2 has a radius of 4A. If the spheres are now connected by a conducting wire, what will be the final charge on each sphere? So once the sphere are connected by a conducting wire, they quickly form a single equal potential surface. Since the potential on a sphere of radius r carrying charge q is given by this equation, so after the spheres are connected by a wire, they will have the same potential, so the potential of sphere 1 will be equal to the potential of sphere 2. So 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q1 over a will be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q2 over 4a. So we have q1 will be equal to q2 over 4. And because q1 plus q2 is equal to minus q minus q, which is equal to minus 2q, then the fact that q1 must be equal to q2 over 4 means that q2 over 4 plus q2 is equal to minus 2q. And this gives q2 is equal to minus 8 over 5q and q1 is equal to minus 2 over 5q. So the answer is D. So for question 8, a parallel plate capacitor is charged to a potential difference of delta V. This results in a charge of plus Q on one plate and a charge of minus Q on the other. The capacitor is disconnected from the charging source and the dielectric is then inserted. What happens to the potential difference and the stored electric potential energy? So in this case, the charge on the capacitor will not change after disconnecting it from the charge source. And because Q cannot change, then C is increased as a result of inserting the dielectric. And since delta V is equal to Q over C, then the potential energy must decrease. And also because the stored potential energy is equal to Q squared over 2C, an increase in C with no change in charge implies a decrease in the stored potential energy and so the answer is a so thank you for watching and see you in the next video